Disney's acquisition of Fox so shortly after the much-delayed release of the New Mutants film means that Josh Boone's planned trilogy won't be happening, and it feels like it'll be forever until we see a new X-Men film on the big screen. However, if there's one silver lining, it's that Kevin Feige and company have their X-Men rights back and have ample time to fine-tune their plans for Marvel's Merry Mutants. Should they seek inspiration, then our beloved X-Men the Animated Series cartoons provide wonderful source material from which to steal. More than a mere cartoon, it still ranks as one of the best superhero animated series to hit the small screen. While in no way perfect, this Fox Kids cartoon from the early 90s had way more ups than downs. From expertly juggling a number of characters to properly developing plots through long-term storytelling, it's fair to say that X-Men the Animated Series is a solid example of how to correctly bring Xavier's comic book team to life. Fingers crossed that Feige and his writers settle on the sofa and binge watch it, while waiting out a certain real-life global disruptor. A proud binger myself. Hi, I'm Sally from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 things the MCU should steal from X-Men the Animated Series. Number 10 subvert expectations immediately. The Infinity Saga provided a number of awesome twists and turns that surprised even the most clairvoyant of fans whilst at the same time steadily maintaining certain audience expectations. With the exception of films like Endgame and Civil War, we've generally known that each film will end with our heroes victorious and their enemies largely defeated. When the X-Men arrive, the MCU must subvert expectations right off the bat like the animated series did. In the second episode of a children's cartoon, one of the X-Men is imprisoned and another is seemingly killed. The movies could and should nick this style of narrative and show in film one that this won't be a comfortable ride by removing a few iconic characters to establish the stakes. Imagine being reintroduced to a familiar character like Beast or Iceman, only to have them killed off immediately. Could they conceivably kill off Professor Xavier or even Magneto in the first film? I'm thinking yes. With the multiverse and time travel opening up endless story possibilities, there's a chance the MCU could distance their X-Men films from the Infinity Saga in a bold way, subverting expectations immediately and keeping fans guessing at every turn. Number 9. Not all heroes need to see combat Of all the heroes introduced in the Infinity Saga, it's difficult to name one who didn't get involved in battle. Although it's tempting to showcase mutations in fight scenes, they should follow the example of the X-Men cartoons and leave a few to warm the benches. Originally, the writers of X-Men the Animated Series planned on keeping Beast out of the main cast, which is why he was in prison during the first season. However, his character was written so well that he became a show favourite, his kindness, intelligence and morality providing a unique perspective within the group. Towards the end of the Avengers franchise, the MCU felt brave enough to breathe more life into its cast of heroes, exploring the fragility of safety, the bitterness of defeat, and the ultimatum of death provided a deeper commentary that could have been explored further had they not focused so heavily on action from the outset. Imagine their tantalising anticipation if they had let Mark Ruffalo remain as Bruce Banner for one or two films before letting Hulk smash. A tease? Yes but as long as they had ensured it was worth the wait, it would have been epic. Marvel Studios should consider removing a top-tier mutant from the battlefield and instead let us explore the character's development from a unique angle. For instance, Rogue could refuse to use her new powers if she absorbs Captain Marvel, or Cyclops could portray more of a Nick Fury-like role, rather than being the X-Men's field leader. The possibilities and potential Oscar nominations are endless. Number 8 include plenty of the X-Men's leading women. The good news is that Marvel has so many X-Men to choose from that we're bound to see an awesome lineup on screen. However, the bad news is they could easily mistake pandering for inclusion. Impressively, if you take a look at the lineup of the animated series, you'll notice that the team's gender isn't overtly male. Aside from Professor X, the team had an equal number of men and women, each with agency and well-developed arcs. Some episodes saw Wolverine as the lone wolf, whilst others followed Jubilee's misadventures. We dove into Rogue and Gambit's pasts, we saw Cyclops and Jean captured, and it can be argued that in many episodes there was no main character at all. The team always felt like a group, not one or two stars with a supporting cast. The MCU could definitely have more female heroes front and centre, and they have a chance to do so in the X-Men movies. There's a plethora of mutants to choose from that can drive and provide previously unexplored story arcs, as well as keep us at the edge of our seats. Number 7. Any incarnation of the team will work. With the last entry in mind, the Marvel Cinematic Universe must also realise that any incarnation of the X-Men has the ability to translate well to the silver screen. This includes their own new lineup. 
Noticeably missing from the ranks of the animated series were Iceman, Angel, Colossus, Nightcrawler, and Kitty Pride, among other favourites from iconic comics. Although a handful of well-known characters only made brief appearances in the cartoon series, their core X-Men team never suffered from these absences. The key to their team's success was the varied ways the characters interacted ideologically. As long as they keep the characters diverse in motive, action, and reaction, the MCU X team could easily be filled with second or third tier mutants and still create an iconic cast to rival the Avengers. In a pre-established cinematic universe, there are already droves of issues for mutants to debate. The Sokovia Accords, the Battle of New York, the Snap, the public outing of Spider-Man, all these talking points can quickly develop the characters and the team dynamic. Casual audiences may wonder why Rogue was swapped out for Boom Boom, but by the time the credits roll, the MCU will have created household names from obscure mutants in a similar fashion to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Number 6. Not every subgroup needs development. One huge bonus Marvel has in acquiring the rights to the X-Men is that they could release an entire saga built around the various mutants or mutant-led teams. But that doesn't mean they should. Not all characters or groups deserve their own feature film. While there's no doubt that the MCU can surely make a franchise out of Excalibur or the Outback team, showing some level of restraint will allow fans time to back their favourite mutant without FOMO keeping their brains from keeping up. One thing that made X-Men the animated series so exciting was that it included so many characters without pulling too much focus from the main team. Weapon X, Alpha Flight, X-Factor and the Morlocks, as well as the villainous Nasty Boys, Reavers and the Inner Circle were all featured in some form, but then removed once they served their purpose. Though fans will crave seeing as many mutants on the screen as possible, surely few would want to wait six years for an X-Men sequel just so the many Quasars or the Savage Land mutants can have their own dedicated films. Number 5. Keep Villains Alive and Lurking Behind the Scenes Let's be honest, the currently established cinematic universe has a slight revolving door for villains problem. No matter how significant the character or actor playing them, so many of the MCU's villains were only given a single film entry before being defeated. Loki was effectively an anti-hero after the Avengers, and Red Skull was one of the only supervillains to return after their demise for a cheeky cameo. Thanos proved how effective a multi-film spanning arch villain can be. Hopefully they don't make another run of one and done nemeses in the X-Men franchise and allow things to breathe, keeping us on our toes as to who the ultimate threat might be. In X-Men TAS, characters like Apocalypse, Mr. Sinister, Sabretooth and other villains could pop up out of nowhere, even if we'd seen them defeated in previous episodes. This created an unpredictability that made each episode exciting. They also used these villains in moderation, making their infrequent arrivals all the more fun. Instead of one-time villains like Trask, Shaw and Apocalypse, the new X-Men movies could allow some some villains to make daring Houdini-esque escapes, only to return further down the line for a grudge match. Number 4. Major Stories Deserve Build-Up the downside to the X-Men coming into the MCU is that we'll likely have even fewer purely X-Men stories than we did in the Fox universe. The screenplay writers will certainly have to condense some major comic book arcs into a single film, as it seems quite unlikely that we'll be treated to a unique X-Men-centered film each year. Knowing this, they should be wary of which iconic stories they choose to utilize and streamline. The X-Men cartoons were different from many other cartoons on offer in the 90s, as it favoured long-form serialised storytelling. The show devoted the majority of a whole season to both the Phoenix and the Dark Phoenix sagas. Many other episodes were two-parters, while the major Beyond Good and Evil story received four episodes on top of its series-long build-up. Number 3. Time travel doesn't need to be a one-time thing. The film version of Days of Future Past was fantastically translated to the screen, but the MCU has the opportunity to be much more ambitious. With time travel already established and Kang and the multiverse incoming, bouncing around the timeline or possibly timelines could become the norm. A casual approach, say a glimpse into multiple futures, or the random appearance of time travelers could help make the X-Men world unpredictable without changing the present day story too dramatically. X-Men TAS did not shy away from incorporating time travel into their series. Bishop and Cable were permitted to pop into the current storyline as their own present changed, and their presence merged nicely with the continuity of the main plot. Such an approach could work for the MCU X-Men. There are already too many moving parts to give every time traveling occurrence world-ending stakes, but putting in a few hop skips and jumps could be the perfect vehicle to introduce well-loved characters and memorable moments from the comic books. 
Number 2. Don't needlessly continue the story when it reaches a natural conclusion. The biggest complaint from any fan of X-Men the Animated Series would be the fifth season. Besides the drop in animation quality, the fifth season felt out of place when it came to the story. That's because the writers originally intended for it to end in the fourth season, with the mammoth four-part epic that was beyond good and evil. However, instead of ending the series with a bang, Fox decided it had a bit more room for the Merry Mutants, and ordered six more episodes at short notice to complete season four. And then a further full season five, which saw the of the much-loved X-Men cartoon come to an end, with all the intensity and confusion of a wet fart. I suppose there were a couple of good episodes in there, but they were the never-aired ones from earlier seasons. Silver linings, I suppose. Whatever arching story Marvel Studios decides to tell with their movie X-Men, they must stick to their planned endpoint, no matter how popular these characters may become, lest they overstay their welcome. Number 1 create a product for fans of every medium. Nearly 30 years later, many still remember X-Men the Animated Series with fondness. And then slight regret for the resulting theme tune earworm. Ultimately, the reason for its success was its ability to cater to a wide range of fans. It was a kid's cartoon with many adult themes, it was comic book accurate in many ways, and also unique enough to stand on its own. It was made for fans young and old, yet never pandered to a group in ways that diluted the spirit of the product. In some ways, the MCU had nothing to lose with many of their films. Few were going to riot if the screenwriters didn't do Ant-Man justice. The X-Men are a much different story. While the MCU should definitely integrate the X-Men into their general fan family-friendly world, they mustn't forget about their other audiences. There's a reason why Logan and Deadpool were so successful, and it's largely down to the freedom afforded to both films by their 15 classifications. That doesn't mean the MCU needs to drop 18-rated films into the mix, but they should stay true to the spirit of the comic books in a similar fashion to how the animated series largely did, and aim to deliver a product that can bring new fans into the X-Men universe while still giving established fans the feeling of richness and depth we already know exists within the chronicles of the X-Men. So that was 10 things the MCU should steal from X-Men the Animated Series. I've been Sally from WhatCulture.com and you have been the audience, the whole audience, and a brilliant one at that. What else can you think of that's worth nicking? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And as ever, you lovelies who keep on hitting that like button and you darlings who subscribe, many, many thanks as it is muchly appreciated. You have yourself an awesome day and I'll see you again soon.